Yeah, well, you mentioned him there. The, the burn unit, Tyg Burn. Uh, you've taken a look at him. Obviously, yeah. we'll be touching upon his uh, future club in yeah, the well second half of the I don't show. Know what you think, Eddie? Do you think he's done enough? For me, he's been one of the best players in Europe. Yeah, he's been he's been right up there all season. Like it's not just a one off, you know. Yeah. And often you get a player who's a big game and a big day, and everyone's talking him up. But he's been delivering every week. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the asset test, really. You know? Yeah. I mean, like he gives you the he gives you the usual second row duties. He's got a massive uh, work rate. His engine is huge, and he's so durable. He's played like eighteen hundred minutes or more now, actually, at this stage, uh, and he keeps delivering consistently. So he's got that line out. You know, he's scrummaging, hitting rocks. But what separates him from the rest is. Uh, the little things we're going to look at here. Um, even in that instance, like he's a good decision maker. You talk about decisions. Like a lot of second rows will just commit into that rock. My scrum has behind me. I'm not going to worry about it. He wants to get onto that ball and play, as do Scarlets all the time. Quick ball. The ref actually blocks off his pass there. So he has to delay. But he has that skill to show that offload. And, and that's Scarlets. And that offload almost sparks him into motion. This is actually the, um, his try against Bath, where they came out of their own 22. So they're, they're on, uh, on the front foot here. Shingler gets that break because Byrne uh, fires him off for the offload. Again, he gets out of the tackle, pops it away. Um, and they come in field through the winger. And now Byrne, again, is looking to straight away get back on that ball. He's always trying to offer himself up. Um, and it's a good little half break from Asquith. On the ref mic, you can hear Byrne here. He's shouting, on your shoulder, on your shoulder. Really good support line. Gets in behind the defence. And there's Anthony Watson. But that's what I was saying about going through the defence. You can get... Just separate guys, get a soft shoulder, get your hands free, and they're onto that like a light. And that's if that happens, it's almost impossible to defend. Watch. Yeah, he's there through the line. There's Anthony Watson in front of him. Uh, you know, not many second rows are going to back their footwork here, but he shows this ridiculous step around Anthony Watson, <laughs> makes a mug of him, and then has the pace to finish off. There just aren't too many second rows who can do that. And his footwork, even in traffic is something that separates them, I think. This is a little, the little shape we're going to see a lot from Scarlets on Saturday. Three men, one passer in the middle, go out the back door um, and play with the second wave. And again, he's part of that second wave there, uh, Byrne. But he just is being lined up here by Dwayne Vermeulen in the defensive line, who obviously outweighs him, is probably more uh, explosive, a more powerful athlete. A lot of second rows just carry into contact, hope for the best, I'm going to try and outmuscle him. Um, and it's only a small thing, but he plants off his right, sorry, he plants off his right foot and he kind of rotates out of the pirouettes out of the tackle um, and leaves Dwayne Vermeulen on the ground there. Um, and that's just a, the that's difference. That's a Simon's Evo player. Yeah. Or Ian Downing. Ian Downing is the time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It just, it's a difference between being behind the gain line um, and going forward. Um, and he's consistently good in that. I think all Irish uh, forwards do a pretty good uh, footwork. Here he is in the middle of that pod himself. Uh, he's there with the blue scrum cap. Um, and putting his skills under pressure, he just pivots. And again, he, it's not the easy option. The easy option there is just carry. But Scarlett's place a premium on their, on their forwards handling the ball. He goes out the back door, and now suddenly the options are on. Uh, Toulon have got defensively tight, and it's a, a pretty spectacular long left-hand pass from Patchell uh, to finish it off in the corner. A nice, easy finish there on the wing. But again, it's just that little simple pass, which we've probably seen from Irish forwards again more and more. Defensively then, like Scarlets are massive on turnover ball. They, they score a lot of tries or get a lot of territory out of it. Um, and he's always looking for turnovers. He has 16 in this competition. Uh, just him alone. And it's not just the Jackals. You know, here he is in a tackle. This is off the first kickoff of the game. And instantly he's in there trying to use that little strip, the reef. Uh, he's not just accepting, I'm going to make an easy tackle here and let it go to ground. And then instantly, those two passes from Scarlets. One from the second row and then Shingler as well. And suddenly, they actually don't execute pretty we uh, very well here, but suddenly there's an opportunity out there from, from Burns' turnover. Um, and the Jackal thing is huge. He's had nine Jackal turnovers out of those 16. Um, and it's not always, like people probably tend to think it's always a dominant tackle when you get those turnovers. But with the Scarlet, it's actually often when they soak a tackle, as we saw with Levy earlier on, or when he's hovering in behind the line. You see him there, he's just been kind of cleared out of the last ruck. So he's in behind the defensive line. La Rochelle get a, a good positive carry, but the ball carry is going to ground. And there he is over the ball. He's got a chance before those two uh, arriving players can get there. And like what, his first actions are probably illegal. You can see him there. His elbows yeah, on the ground. I don't think he's got a great release there. I think he's gone straight that, in. That neither. His elbows are on the ground. He's off his feet. Yeah. But he knows that when they arrive in, like it's very easy for us to figure out. The ref has to judge it in real time. They're going to drive him back up onto his feet. And you, now you can see he's on his feet again. So he's actually using their momentum against Sorry. him, back on his feet, gets a turnover. Um, and in this instance, there's actually advantage playing. So they, they go back over and play that. But he's always just hovering in that kind of second wave. You see here, Toulon on the front foot again. Um, uh, offload there from Tau Fnua, um, and Peterson goes forward. There's, uh, there he is coming from the side burn. Um, and it's probably technically like a side entry here. 
he needs to get back around on his side, but like all good open sides, even though he's not an open side, they're really good at rotating their body into it. So you approach from the side, but you snap your feet back, and now instantly it looks to the ref again, a really good picture there, that he's come from behind and he's, he's legal to challenge that ball. Again, he's probably not fully in control of his body weight, but he knows Vermeulen's going to drive him back up. And you have to be quite brave to get into those positions because he's going to absolutely well, smash, pounded, yeah. smash your upper back. The crap out but of he's it. got a great bit of dog in him and he always keeps in the fight and he gets a reward there, gets back up onto the ball. And again, you see the Scarlet's um, mindset, an instant offload, looking to play away and move the ball to the other side of the pitch. So he's massive in terms of their attack and their defence and he brings all the work away as well. I think he's an unbelievably good signing for Munster. What do you think, Eddie? Is he going to play for Ireland? Yeah, in that form, yeah. He has to come in direct then. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be easy to get on the Irish team at the moment. But he's certainly, uh, he, he's certainly good enough to be in those precincts, you know, I think. Yeah. And it's funny, like, it's a kind of slightly circuitous route into the Irish team, but it's happened before. Mike Ross went to England. He was in Cork He couldn't get a monster contract. He went off to, uh, I think it was Harlequins. Yeah. And then he eventually came back, you know. Um, so, like... Chris Farrell's another example. Yeah, France. sometimes when you go away like that and you just do something different certain environment things start to fit for you i mean it doesn't mean that where he was where he started out that they got it wrong you know he's obviously developed as a player yeah, for whatever true. reason sometimes that's because he got better coaching sometimes it's because in his own head he flipped a switch you know and players do that yeah and for him staying fit like he was he had two torturous years in leinster yeah. um, and as you say like it's, i've seen leo cullen get a bit of criticism for letting him go but yeah. at the time it was definitely the right decision you see that's playing monday morning quarterback yeah. you know like it's easy <laughs> Like, you know, yeah, oh, you should have known, you should have known. But at the time, like, who jumped up and down at the time and said, this is an insane decision? Nobody. Because yeah. yeah. the information they had was, this is the best decision. You know, so I think it's easy to do that in, in retrospect, you know, you know, kind of say, oh, you should have known better. Not really. Because in that environment, you are where you are and you make that decision. Do you make wrong ones? Of course you do. You know, nobody makes the right decision all the time. So I think the fact he's coming back is the, the most important thing. And he's probably better for his time away. Mm, yeah. You know, and he's whatever he's found his mojo, that's for sure. Yeah.